Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Emma. I have 20 minutes before my next appointment and because I have a bit of time, I'm going to address something which has been raised. I just had a video on my main page, Emma Manson. That video was looking at uh, domestic abuse and I was trying to draw people's attention to the signs of abuse. Things that help you work out that you are getting abused. Things that draw your attention. Well, for people, good morning, good morning again. You were on the other broadcast, so you know exactly what I was talking about on that broadcast. Now, on this one, I am actually addressing something very specific. So at first, I was actually addressing the victims. In truth, it's not really right addressing the victims because the victims usually are helpless. They would have fallen victim to the mental onslaught. They would have been psychologically damaged before uh, uh, the physical abuse starts. They would be so totally unaware of what's going on because of what they've suffered. So actually, it is not the victims who should save themselves. It is those who love the victims. It is those who are close, near and dear to the victims. It is those of us who understand, those of us who've not been subject to the mental onslaught, the ones who are able to still have distance and clarity. We are the ones who should notice abuse. It would be good if we raise it with the victims and they do see what we mean. But in most cases, the victims will have absolutely no idea what you're on about because they are abused. They are victims. That's what makes them victims. If that's the case, then the most important thing will be for you to understand that you will have to be your sister's keeper in this case. You will have to be your sister's keeper. You will have to resist her oppressor. You will have to resist her oppressor. You will have to help your sister overcome. You have to. It, that job falls squarely on your shoulders. You will have to fight the sister to save her sometimes. Sometimes you just refuse to leave. You just refuse to leave. If you understand these things, if you understand this role, if you know the important thing you will do for the abused, if it is clear that uh, the abused is not going to be the person fighting for their own liberation, if you understand this job very well, then you are less likely to give up. You are less likely to get frustrated. If you understand that the person is broken here and that you are only dealing with a physical shell, you don't try to reason with people like that. Victims of abuse are difficult to reason with for this reason. So let me go through the stages of abuse again from the discussion I had earlier. It is very easy for somebody to abuse when they've actually psychologically damaged the victim already. So most abusers start with the mental games. They start with the unnecessary control. They start trying to interfere. Cynthia, good morning. Interfere with the person's social structure, social systems. They alienate. They remove everybody who is likely to see what they are up to and draw her attention to. These people understand what they are doing and they use underhand tactics to try and gain. Let me find somewhere to hang this. So when you see a sister abused, when you are trying to save a sister from a funny situation, when you can clearly see this guy is no good. Good morning, Cynthia. When you can see this guy is up to no good and you try and explain it to the sister, please understand. This sister may already be at the latter stages of abuse. This person would have started with little hints. They always go for your self-esteem first. They would ship at your self-esteem. They would damage your self-esteem. They will make you second guess yourself. They will make you feel unworthy of love. They will make you feel that they are your only chance of love. And when somebody successfully gets you to that point, you are very grateful for whatever little they offer you. Yes, it's little. Yes, it's inadequate. But they will make you feel so grateful for it because they get you to believe that that's the only option available to you. And when a sister is mentally in this state, when a sister believes this nonsense, she is not in a hurry to let you ruin it for her. Understand. You will have to remind yourself that you are going to be the last man standing in most cases. 
and you have to be prepared to be the last man standing for your sister. That's what I mean by being a sister's keeper. The sister is not going to thank you for it. The sister is not going to cheerlead for you. The sister sometimes is going to fight you aggressively. She's going to ask you to leave her alone. Why is it your business? Blah, de blah, de blah. Remember that all those utterances are utterances of a broken spirit. That is what you say when you are psychologically ruined. And the perpetrators always start from that point because they do know that once they get the victim to that point, they are winning. Please, please, please be a sister's keeper. I know her husband doesn't want you to be her friend, but commit to be her friend for the sake of the relationship you've had in the past. I know she's your sister and she's verbally abusing you for commenting on her marriage because your sister is a broken shell. Your sister's spirit is broken. There's only the shell left. The shell is not logical. The shell cannot reason. The shell alone is not capable of doing what your sister needs. She needs you. She needs you to stand in and to protect her. She needs you to be there and challenge this person because you are the only challenge which is left. He has systematically removed all, all her reserves, systematically alienated all her support mechanisms. He is nearly there and he probably will kill her if you decide to step aside. Remember that. Sometimes it's as basic as the one friend who re refuses to leave, the one friend who stays regardless, the one friend who makes a new sense of yourself to this abuser is the only hope your sister has. The one person who keeps going and keeps going and gets insulted but still stays and fights eventually is the one who will break through to the sister. When she's finally broken, she will need somebody to pick her up. Your sister does need you. I don't know how many of you are experienced with dealing with people who've been abused. If you have any experience of dealing with people who are abused, they are the first people to blame themselves. They will tell you it's not his fault. She spoke out of 10 because these are things that this guy would have said to her repeatedly. That it's because her cooking is not good. Because she's not a good enough mother. Because she can't do that, that and the other. And these are all reasons they've been giving over a long, long time and they believe it. If he leaves her, she would never find another man. Nothing you say at that point will make any sense because she does want a man. I was just having a conversation with somebody recently and I asked her, so what do you need a man for? She says, what do you mean? A woman must have a man. I'm like, you, okay, you have a man. What does he do for you? Apart from abuse you emotionally, what else does he do for you? She couldn't answer. Okay, let's talk in the physical. Sister, how much service are you getting? None. And then she's looking at me like, yeah, a guy who takes you to that point is usually not the guy who will provide enough service. And even if he does service, it's to punish. It is to control. It is not for enjoyment. So there are sisters who get serviced every day. No, they actually get wounded every day. They get broken physically every day. These guys, they use it as a controlling technique. It isn't what it's supposed to be. It is misused. So sister, what exactly are you afraid of? When you lose this stupidity, what have you actually lost? And she's like, yeah, 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 he's going to leave and there'll be nobody in your bed. Yeah, is your bed even warm as it is? She couldn't answer me. Sister, is your bed warm? I know there's somebody in your bed right now. I don't know what's happened to the light. It's really dipped and I can barely see my face. I think that might be the case for you. Forgive me. I only have 20 minutes before, actually 10 more minutes before my next lesson. So I'm not going to waste time trying to work on lighting and stuff like that. I just want to get the message out. Sister, what exactly are you afraid of? What do you think you would actually lose? You've lost it all already. You have nothing. She's looking at me like... Uh, but I do have a husband. You do have him in name, only in name, and nothing but name. Useless husband, if it's only in name. And she's looking at me like, why are you still giving me so much grief? Because I love you. I am giving you grief because I care about you. I'm giving you grief because I want to protect you. Sometimes at the expense of a title, but I do want to keep you safe. 
this guy is unhinged actually the particular case i'm referencing the guy is has been sectioned regardless of anything i said of course she did not listen when he eventually flipped is when everything i have said to her came flooding back i told her in no uncertain terms if you misunderstood what i'm saying and if you hang around victoria good morning he will kill you one day he will kill you and i will come to your funeral i will weep inconsolably i will weep but after that i will go and i have dinner and i'll sleep she thought that was so harsh she thought it was so ruthless and maybe it was but when he finally flipped when he finally had the look in his eye when he finally was looking for a weapon to use those words came flooding right back to her so she ran so she ran so she got out of the flat and run in the streets so she screamed and the neighbors heard and they came calling so people came and they went you know what was funny so did he he had flipped he was not expecting that result he was not expecting that response so he did flip he actually did go out of the house not wearing much because he was expecting her to stay and receive as she'd stayed and received always he was not expecting the bolt reflex but finally her bolt reflex was activated he came out with a cricket baton in hand screaming and shouting telling everybody he was going to kill her yes he did yes he did and that was him in public can you imagine what would have happened in the confines of the home if she had stupidly stayed can you imagine the story i'd have been telling you people tried to restrain him but he was out of control he wanted to kill her and there was death in his eyes and everybody could see it the only lucky thing for this sister of mine is that there were many witnesses many witnesses people who saw exactly what it was and started speaking to her and then things i had said to her in the past came flooding back she realized she understood her kids were picked up from school by social services that day the kids became subjects of an inquiry and then the kids had an awful lot to say the most heartbreaking thing was her son explained how weak his mother was how pathetic his mother had become poor boy poor boy had witnessed all this didn't know what to do about it the victims are many it's usually not just the lady so even if you feel like giving up on a sister even if you think she's brought it on herself even if you are not sympathetic to the sister in god's name please consider the kids stay because of the kids keep chipping at it because of the kids keep working on her because of the kids keep offering support because of the kids be willing to help the kids even if your sister is beyond redemption i i must admit this particular one i thought was beyond redemption nothing i said was actually making any impact i was speaking to a wall so i thought but at the appropriate time when the tide turned that is what that's what her redemption was if you see a sister being alienated refuse to leave if you see somebody isolating a sister draw her attention to it tell other people who are also likely to abstain from a relationship to stand and be a pillar for the sister refuse to go refuse to go stay to protect a sister be your sister's keeper i will talk about this topic a lot it is a topic i'm very emotional about it is extra raw for me right now because of a couple of incidents in the last 24 hours or so two incidents and in each case i look at the uh, incident i'm like oh Amma, you should have talked about this a long 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 time ago so yes if you are the lady please listen to reason if you can but if you are the loved one of a lady understand she might already be broken 
she might already be ruined she might be incapable of what you are asking her to realize you are dealing with an empty shell the substance has already been removed and if you understand this simple thing continuing to support them realizing that you're working with an empty shell helps you understand why she's not responding she's not capable of it it makes you more empathetic more sympathetic because you understand better don't feel she doesn't want help sometimes she doesn't even recognize help she doesn't know help please understand a sister in need might not necessarily be a sister who realizes her need understand and may the good lord touch your heart may he continue to give you the strength to fight it's a tough unpleasant fight but it must be fought we have many sisters to redeem as i kept saying if you don't want to do it for the sister do it for the children they are victims innocent victims they haven't chosen this they've been forced into this so even if the sister feels like a lost cause stay for the sake of the kids help for the sake of the kids support because of the kids in spite of the sister i want to leave this one here on this somber note because i've got to go and work and anytime i have a few minutes i will take messages and i will respond to the messages it would be on both channels so those of you who speak uh she check i'm a man saying you will see the longer video addressing this this is my uh, shorter tongue-in-cheek version this is actually not addressing the victims because i've realized you don't address the victim sometimes the victims are hopeless sometimes there's nothing you can achieve precious good morning addressing an empty shell is a waste of your time and the day you recognize that you're dealing with an empty shell things change please 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 in goodness name please for the sake of love please for the sake of kindness i am begging you to stay i'm begging you to refuse to leave even if she asks you to leave i am begging you to hover around i am asking you to be an overlook i am asking you to be the last man standing for a sister because she needs it thank you so much for watching let me love you let me leave you and let's talk in a few more minutes see ya